Healing and I'm thriving. No, not just surviving. Healing and we're thriving now. Oh, oh, healing and I'm thriving. No, not just surviving. Healing and I'm thriving now. Oh, Michael's money. Hey. Get busy in here. Get busy in here. Yeah, my squad run deep. Yeah, we really in here. I swear, whatever you want, you can get it in here. Comedy or the drama, it's a mixture in here. But you love it in here. Yeah, you love it in here. Got reviews up in here. We got stories in here. Hit the like, hit the sub, hit the bell. Oh, yeah. Three clicks like the shoes on Dorothy in here. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Busy Blue, and I am black. Okay, with another recap and review. Today, I am recapping and reviewing Real Housewives of Potomac, episode 14. Sun's out, buns out, or whatever, okay? When you get into here, make sure that you like, you comment, subscribe. Tell me how you feel. You know what I really do like? I do like when the people talk to me as the video goes on. If you want a timestamp, you can. But since this is a pre-recorded video, Talk to me as you have feelings. And I promise you, if you look back at my older videos, I comment back to every person as much as I can. Uh, it doesn't matter when you comment, I come back and I try to talk to you because we have a conversation here. Let's talk to each other. It's kind of hard when you're talking to yourself. Um, we move to my stuff behind because I got to get to work soon. All right, y'all. So we um uh leave off. Well, we start off where we left off last um, episode where NECA is being uh, crowned the Grand Dame. Okay, they continue to make her the Grand Dame. She says she feels like she don't really deserve the title of the Grand Dame because that's for older people, but she'll take it and she'll move on with it. Child Candace is upset. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know how Candace is making me feel this season. I know she says she has an exit plan. Yeah, I know I'm a Candace fan, but... Just everything is not a fight. Everything is not a battle. But I guess, you know, when you don't like somebody, sometimes you're just like, even if they breathe, you're upset about it. Like, you just don't even want them to even breathe. You're like, oh, you hear her over there living? You know, so maybe that's just how she is right now. Anyway, Karen says, look, she don't care um, about the Grand Dame title, which she actually does. You could, you could tell that she does. But she says that she really doesn't care. So she talks to... um. Uh, she talks to uh, NECA and she's like, hey, you know, I I'm happy that you're in the zip code. This and that. She's like, I'll take the shade. She's like, oh, no, this is not shade towards you. This is towards Giselle. OK, we we all live in Potomac, which they don't. All of them don't live in Potomac. But she said, look, um, God is good and we'll be great together. They both walk off into the sunset. Um, and Karen says, this is not a crowning. This is a clowning. And she's done with it. Um, but NECA is a good sport about um, um, moving about it all um, and moving into the um, outskirts of Potomac, which I mean, if you live there, you live there, whether you're at the edge of it or not. But I, I guess whatever. So then we get them going to they're driving golf carts to the golf course. It looked like they were playing top golf, really, which I love. But <laughs> yeah, if, if you have ever played top golf, you know, you just hit the balls into like little holes and stuff. And you get points or whatever. So they start playing. Um, Giselle, it's something about Giselle. She just, she, she, I, I don't know, but she was like, the winner has to kiss the loser. The loser has to kiss the winner. And you got to add tongue. I don't know what's going on. They was like, look, this is not Jason. What's like, uh, and then also, what's going on with Jason? She says that uh, they've been dating for um, since November, so six months, but nobody's counting. Um, and she says that they aren't official. Okay, Giselle still looks at herself as single, but they are dating. They're not exclusive. Um, so Mia asked, well, what about if you saw him post with somebody else on social media? And she said, well, that wouldn't happen because I've already let him know how I felt about that. So they have some type of agreement around how they're going to communicate with each other. Um, if they still been talking this long, do you ever feel like this is a real relationship? I just want to know because if, you know, normally it's one season they're talking and then it's, oh, I mean, it seems like this has been a long time. I don't know. Y'all tell me how y'all feel, but they've been dating for a while, but it's not official. Um, So they, until they have the conversation, she says that they're not boyfriend and girlfriend. They're not together until the actual conversation is made. I'm sorry. I got like papers and stuff all behind me. Um... 
But until it's made, nothing's happening. Karen uh, goes over to Candace and she says, I noticed that you walked away when the crying was happening. And Candace was like, yes, because it's just stupid. Like, I don't want to have to deal with all of that. Um, and Karen says, well, it's because Giselle has nothing going on. You know, and um, a title. And this is what was really weird because doesn't uh, um, Candace really thrive on the fact that she was Miss United States? So, I mean, it's kind of. She cares about the title, so it was weird talking to somebody who really cares about the title. Because even she said, "Hey, Pageant Patty, Pageant Patty has a title too, boo." Okay, what's yours? <laughs> so, um, I don't need a title. You know, I didn't. The, the title came to me, but I don't even care about those other things. You know, it's not really important. And Candace says, "Well, it is if your title is being a raggedy bee." Okay. So they leave that and they keep um, going home um, and they keep going on. So after that, you got um, them getting together because they're about to go to eat dinner. And Kiana says, look, I'm about to go back to the house really quickly, take some medicine. She's just still not feeling well. I like Kiana a lot, but she's still not feeling well. So she's going to go back to the house really quickly. So they get to the dinner and Giselle starts off by saying, you know what, Karen, I want to thank you. Because you gave me some advice um, that I really needed to take in. And the, the advice basically was, you cannot make Grace's graduation and everything all about you. And every time we see Giselle, she's like, oh, I'm going to cry. You're going to make me so sad. Da, 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 da. And you need to let your children figure it out. Um, so she says, look, um, she put herself together. Grace leaves on Tuesday. And then she's going to be at an HBCU in Florida. I'm glad she's not telling us where it is because I don't need the people trying to follow the girl around. Mia said, um, are you scared about her going to Florida? Um, and I will say, Wendy and Candace were making faces. Now, you ain't got to like the, the lady, but I don't know. I do feel like they all do cultivate around their children and everything. So it was kind of weird. I don't, I, I just, I didn't understand the faces they were making um during the conversation like i just didn't understand why they were talking to each other and making faces like mm, let me sleep i'm bored like it i don't i don't know but i guess if you don't if you don't care about somebody then that's it i don't know how did y'all feel about wendy and candace making faces during that time did y'all feel like it was inappropriate did y'all feel like well i if they don't like her then why are they doing anything it doesn't matter you know um y'all tell me um and then um, Robin says something about an air confessional. So Giselle said, look, she's scared about her daughter going to Florida. It's a really crazy place. Um, it's, and it kind of feels like another world, another realm. She's going to a whole nother country. Um, but she says she's, she's taught her well enough to stay on campus, to find a friend, and then she'll figure it out. Then here comes Wendy, which I didn't like her advice. I don't know how y'all felt about it. I didn't like it. So she was like, um, uh, basically, but uh, I know how the what the state of Florida is and knowing how, you know, stand your ground and it, they uh, talk, um, they um, accept the things that are done to black and brown people in Florida just because they have to stand your ground long and how bad the governor is. I would never send my children, my boys out there. And my whole thing is this. You cannot dictate where your children are going to. You can influence and you can have a heavy, a heavy influence. But if your child is like, I want to get away and I want to go somewhere, you got to let, you have to let that leash go. They're grown. How did y'all feel about that? You can be scared all you want. You could be afraid. You could be fearful. You could be scared. You could be worried. But you have to trust your child, trust that you've given them the right tools and everything to navigate and go by. And then you want them to, they've been under your thumb for 18 years and now they're ready to go to college and be free and do something else. And it's not like she's just traveling the world. She's about to go to school. At this point, you could be no shade. And I, I know this is bad to say, but you could be shot at a movie theater at a church, going to the club, going to a bar at school. And like the gun violence is just bad here. The crazy things are happening horribly here. And you you cannot stifle your children into going where you think that well these are the states you're not allowed to go to. I don't I don't know I'm not a parent so if I have any moms 
um, or dads out there, how do y'all feel about them? Or any gunkles um, out there, how do y'all feel about um, her sentiment of, I would never let my children grow out there, which I think is really weird, really strange. Let your children fly. Um, at the end of the day, Karen said, you know what? I know it's a scary thing, but I'm glad that she's doing whatever she wants to do. And um, uh, Giselle says, look, Grace wanted to go to a HBCU and that's where she's going to go. And I'm going to let her figure it out because she's had to experience racism here in Maryland. So, and I can attest to that. Um, so, cause we below the, the Mason Dixon line, but it's not that different to be honest, unless you live in, in like a black space, Maryland ain't that different. So I think she'll be able to handle herself there. It's just going to be scary for her to go there. And Karen says, look, at the end of the day, what our job is, is to uplift each other. We want to build each other up and see each other win. And Giselle, after doing her good, dude, her thank you to Karen, she then says, you know what? Now that we're speaking on that, uh, I had um, I had a problem with how you, at the party at NECA's house, um, is it just me or when um, Robin and, when, um, and Giselle say NECA's name, they sound like they're saying the N-word. It just never sounds like NECA. But anyway... Um, <laughs> she said, I had a problem with you saying that me, it was screwing a rapper. And Karen said, um, y'all, uh, cause she said, well, cause you would have called me out and you would have said, oh my God, Giselle's trying to break up family. She's trying to mess up marriages, da, da, da. And Karen says, look, y'all have called out my marriage several times within this group. Um, and Mia said, yeah, but then, but I haven't. So then why would you do it to mine? And Karen says, well, let me tell you something. I brought it to your face and said it in front of everyone, which I don't think that that's a good idea. And Mia's, um, and they flash back to Mia, which to be honest, Mia has always brought back everything to Karen. And to be and here, Mia did not spread that rumor. Sharice was the one who was spreading that rumor and Mia brought it to her face. So sometimes, and I know y'all love Karen, she be faking a bunk. She really be faking the funk. And that's what I don't like about her sometimes. And y'all be letting her get off. Um, she told it to your face, too. So Karen was like, well, as a human, I believe. I'm a human being, I believe, too. She said, you are. Mia says, you are. And that's why I haven't shared um, the true story. Child, I don't know. Y'all tell me. Put it in the comments. Mia knows something. Mia knows something. Because Karen was like, well, you don't know my true story. Mia was like, you want to try it? Mm -hmm. Do you want Do you want to try it? Child, when I say as soon as that stuff happened, Karen was like, well, you know, I, uh, uh, you know, I'm not trying to pick a fight with you. You know, if you want to make up rumors, I'll make up rumors too. I'm not going back and forth with you about a rumor, sis. Okay. She was lightly cutting her food up. She's like, you know what? Let's move on. Let's, yeah, let, I have nothing to hide. Let's move on. Girl, Mia got some stuff. What do y'all? I just the fact as fast as Kim was like, let me shut up. Let me shut up. Mia know something. So moving on from there, you got Kiana, who thanks Giselle. She was like, look, I've been very sick, and you know she hit Wendy and Candace with a couple of with a couple of strays. Boo boo. Um, because I've been really sick, and I want to thank you, Giselle, for coming in to check up on me. And Candace was like, "Well, I didn't know you felt bad and that you were sick like that." To be honest, it doesn't seem like they're Wendy or um, uh, Candace are concerned about her at all. I'm just, I'm just, I'm really just saying. So I don't know if this, these are fake friends or whatever, but Candace and Wendy was like, "I'm sorry, we'll check up on you. I didn't know you were sick like that." Blase, blase. They go back home, go to sleep. Then we get to the next day. Um, Mia, she's talking to Giselle. She's like, what did I do to her? Like, why is she so upset with me? And basically what Giselle said was that, you remember last year when all of that stuff happened, y'all supposed to be friends. And you remember you told her she picked a side trying to check on Wendy and this and that. So maybe she feels like you're supposed to be, you know, having allegiance to her and going to check up on somebody else is just not the move. So maybe that's what it was. Um, she felt slighted. So... That makes sense, and maybe she goes to figure out the best way to do it. Now, the way she went about trying to apologize to Karen was not the best way. They get to breakfast. 
Karen came in with this negligee on. She was just naked. She was just naked. Mia came up after hearing what she said, what Giselle said to her and was basically like, my queen, the grand dame, what do I need to do? How do I make sure that, you know, since you brought me into this group that I really give you everything that you need? And Candace, um, Karen was like, look, I've already said what I had to say last night. And, you know, I've moved on. You should move on. Okay, whatever. So then Giselle says in her confessionals, she's not talking to Candace or Wendy because of the faces that they were making as she was talking about her daughter. But at the end of the day, y'all already don't talk. Like, what's the but what's the new news? What's the new news? Because don't y'all already not talk? Or, like already, yeah, do y'all get what I'm saying? What's the new news? Because you already don't talk. This is what my problem is. Just resolve the conflict, and this what this show is about to start going downhill because they don't just talk. Giselle. Say, look, I didn't like the way that you were. Can we have a conversation really quickly? I didn't like the way that you were talking. I mean, I guess the last time they had tried to have a conversation was about Chris. Uh, yeah, and let Giselle tell you, uh, raping her in the bedroom or grabbing her and pulling her into a bedroom and stuff like that. So who knows? Um, Then we get to a game time. I'm not going through the whole scene. Basically, it was called answer the question. Robin wrote the questions down so you know they're about to be as you will, you know. Um, the questions were, do you like your hard, fast, slower, sensual? Next one was, what is a fantasy you have never shared? Next one was, what's the longest you've gone without sex? When was the last time Ashley had sex? What was the fetish that your partner asked you to have yet that you have not done yet? I loved it when Robin was like, well, he wants to see me do something with somebody else. He doesn't care who it is. He know I won't do a girl, so it's going to have to be a man. He know you won't do a girl. The next question was, who's better in bed, athletes, models, or pastors? Um, who was the rapper that Mia has sex with and when? Um, uh, what you, who would you trade partners with? And then how many partners have you had in the past five years? Moving on. After that, we get to lunchtime. They talk about how everybody is enjoying themselves. They had all of these games. It's been so much fun. Um, Ashley brings up um, her sex life. and She says she feels uncomfortable talking about this with regards to everyone else because she is still legally married. So she doesn't want to um, be disrespectful um, and talking about what happens in her personal life and all of that because she's still legally married and she doesn't feel like it's appropriate to do that. Um, and what they need to also learn is that she's never been by herself. So this is kind of hard. She doesn't get any money from Michael, um, but there is security with Michael. And if he she needs something that, you know, if something happens or if something her business has failed, that she, she'll always have her children and everybody that will support her. Um, so she's never been by herself. So then Mia said, well, I, then I, is it fair to say that you're staying with him for the money um, or financial reasons? And Wendy says, well, what did you get with Gordon for? As Mia, did you, uh, did you get with Gordon for financial reasons? And Mia said, no, he's he, y'all know he's broke. Um, and um Keanu was like, well, he's broke now, but he wasn't before. So did you get with him because he was broke? She was like, well, no, when we got into a relationship, I had more money than he did. Um, it was like, wait, what? Yeah, but mine was from inheritance. <sighs> inheritance. Meaning... The act of inheriting property, the act of, hold on, let me put this up for y'all, because she said hers was from an inheritance. So it's the act of inheriting property, the reception of genetic qualities by transmission from a parent to an offspring, the acquisition of possession, condition, or trait of past generations. We're going to assume. Let's just assume she's talking about the one genetically because when she get money, when she get this inheritance, okay, let's, let's move on. But she said it was from my inheritance. Candace said from who? <laughs> from who? Who's the inheritance from? But anyway, we move on from there. Um, um, Mia said, you know, people are going to think what they want, but 
There's a difference between assets, cash and assets. Yes, I have more cash in the bank than he did. So they were like, well, wasn't you stripping for him in that steak and lobster restaurant? And you said that he was coming in on baller's nights. He was giving 10 G's to you, you know, regularly. And she was like, 10 G's, that's breakfast. That's dinner. Where are you eating? That though, she said, that's lunch money. What are you having for lunch? Like, what are you having for lunch? That's a little m lunch money. Candace was like, girl, I didn't know about these. <laughs> what did she call them? Because I didn't write it down. But um, basically, these rich uh, strippers or whatever. Um, everybody was lost. Nobody would understand what was going on. So Giselle was like, can somebody tell me how we got here? And Ashley was like, well, it's because basically they were asking about my situation. and um how i'm uh, staying with him and why i'm staying with him and i'm just trying to make it through and i know that whatever i need michael will help me provide and then candace says have you been going to your life coach she says well actually she's a confidence coach y'all at this point i'm gonna start making my own culture business because we got life coach independence coach um confidence coaches y'all girls are going to brunches to get your your financial boost coaches I need to become a coach. Oh, let me think of a coach. Y'all put it in the comments. If you think there's a, there's a coaching thing that I could do, put it in the comments. Hashtag whatever coach. Okay. Hashtag whatever coach it is. So hashtag <laughs> Howard Swag Coach. I'm about to be a Howard Swag Coach. <laughs> hashtag Shady Coach. Put whatever coach you think I should be. Put that in there now, Ashley. Um, I think I'm going to make this a premiere. Um, so then she said, yeah, she encouraged her to have a goal, to have a song written by her birthday. And she was like, oh, and they were like, whoa, whoa, did you do one? She was like, yeah. And she was like, well, sing it, girl. Ashley on the mic. Ashley pulls out the mic. Healing and I'm thriving. No, not just surviving. Healing and I'm thriving. Now nah, with the drums, with the drums, with the drums. Healing and I'm thriving. No, not just surviving. Healing in a thriving now. Healing in thriving, healing in thriving, healing in thriving. I said I'm healing in, I'm healing in, I'm healing in thriving. Said I'm healing in, I'm thriving. Said I'm healing in, I'm healing in. No, not just a, no, not just a. healing in, I'm thriving. No, not just a thriving. Healing in them thriving now, so we healing everybody. Healing in them thriving, no, not just surviving. Healing in them thriving, healing in them thriving now, yeah. So they all said yes. I don't think it's gonna be a banger unless you use my version. Unless she uses my version, I don't think that it's gonna be a top forty, top one hundred. But Kwame, girl, we could do something together. If you want to collab, we could do something together. So after she sat down from that song with the knife, um, um, Wendy says, so what about your, you know, your 30, your triple 20 party? What's going on? She says she's excited about that. And she's excited about her new trainer, which I don't understand where the trainer came from. It's, um, I don't understand where, where this new trainer came from, why the trainer came up. But she says she's not going to talk about the trainer. She's not going to let anybody know about the trainer, this and that. Okay, girl, whatever. Um, um, But he's going to be a legend in the group. So we'll see. After that, they take pictures. They head to the beach. They all take pictures because apparently there was like some sports illustrated thing, photo shoot that was talking about there. Um, They separate and go their own ways. After that, some people go in the water. Some people sit down. And then Mia and Robin, I mean, Giselle and Robin talk to Mia about how they were making faces and eye rolling that the dinner when Giselle was talking about her daughter and Mia said she peeped it. They didn't like it. It's like, get out of here. We're talking about our children here. This is not appropriate. So then Wendy and Candace come over and they're like, what y'all talking about? And that's where the episode ends. Um, if y'all were going to rate this episode, tell me y'all I'm out of breath from that song. Um, tell me what y'all would give it. I'm going to give it a good 7.5. It was like up and down. It wasn't the best episode, but it was up and down with the stuff. And it wasn't, it was melodrama and I like that. So I'm good with it. Um, how y'all feel about, uh, Candace and Wendy rolling their eyes and doing all that stuff with Grace? How do you feel about where y'all think that Mia's inheritance came from? Do y'all feel like 
um wendy and candace are being good friends to kiana and not checking up on her did y'all feel some type of way that they grant um made um and like a, a a part of uh the grand dame club can only karen have it she's going in her triple 20s you know we gotta you know pass down the range she can't be like queen elizabeth and holding it forever you know um so and do y'all feel like Robin wouldn't have sense in front of her husband with a girl? Okay, put those comments down below. If y'all want to know more about me and everything else I have going on, you can find me on Instagram and on Twitter, Busy Blue, no space, no E. You can also find me on Twitch, Busy Blue, where this probably will not be streaming right now. I'm about to go get busy, and you all stay busy. Until next time.